Hey everybody, it's David. I'm here. <laughs> yes, I'm in Bemidji, uh, Minnesota. I just got done with a workshop in um, Bagley, Bagley, Minnesota. A three-day workshop that was really, really fun. And I'm sure a bunch of them are going to be on tonight. And um, actually the beer tonight is from Karen, who doesn't live in Minnesota, but lives in Wisconsin, which I'll be next week. So, But we're drinking her beer this week. And next week we'll be drinking um a wisconsin beer i mean a minnesota beer uh, so this week we're drinking one from green bay because karen was here at the workshop and she brought me this mean green tangerine ipa and so we're going to try that today tonight and i was from green bay and we're in minnesota but next week we're being in wisconsin and then i'll be um, drinking with minnesota beer and so we had a lot of fun this week at the um workshop and here in in minnesota and it's Bagley, like I said, Bagley. We had 25 students and we all had a, actually a great, great, great time. And so here, let me see what this beer tastes like. I would have had the other one, but I, I made this one cold and I was like, oh shoot, this is from Wisconsin and I'm in Minnesota. So next week we'll be drinking the other one. So green, mean green machine. A tangerine. Wow, not bad. There's an IPA, it's a little bitter, but it's not it's not really, really bitter, so that's cool. I'm gonna give this I'm gonna give this about uh, eight point five. It's 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 got a little tangerine um taste to it. It's pretty cool. Cheers everybody, cheers, cheers, cheers. Next week we're gonna be in Minnes in Wisconsin at the Dillman at Dillman's. And if you're still not signed up, and you do want to go there i think there's a few spaces available i haven't called them but i think there's a couple more seats available please call up and go there so tonight we're doing a a scene from prague and um it was really fast to put this together and i'm in a hotel room now so it's not quite as it's a little bit different than my usual but hopefully it'll be pretty close to what we do first off here's my web a website at um becker art becker art and this is actually the painting we're doing there so beckerart.net it's not dot com see people were asking me it's and they were going to beckerart.com but it's not that i have to pay two thousand dollars if i want that name so no it's going to be beckerart.net for a while <laughs> and then um the other way to getting there is davidrbecker.com and find out everything i do there and for all the newcomers that's where you can go here is my materials list that we'll be using and a whole bunch of watercolors we learned this week my brushes I'm not going to use any mascoid on this one, and I didn't use transfer paper. Um, we are using Stonehenge Aqua, 300 pound paper. And so let's go right to our value study because that's the most important. And always, um, the value study is what we want to look at. You can see I have the camera up here pointing down. <laughs> and um, so if you look at this, <clears throat> the color version, it's a very much, um, you know, it's very easy to tell what's black and white. You know, what what is the light pattern and um so all the buildings all the people everything is going to be my darks and the sky is the light it's that simple and a little bit of the street here which is going to these two people i know it's in the center but it's kind of a formal composition it's not informal because informal would be like a little bit different on both sides but this is kind of a formal composition now the clouds i was trying to think how i'm going to do that because the clouds if you look on this side they're yellow and so yellow clouds um because the sun is there and the only thing that's white is going to be the uh, of the paper is going to be right here and um and i don't have a pointer sorry i just forgot about that so <laughs> and then if you look in the sky over here they are just light and so i was trying to figure out you could do it with masking fluid put down yellow first let it dry then put your masking fluid down then do your other washes but that's too much I, and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use white paint and because i was telling my class all week that it is okay to use white paint so that's what we're going to be doing using white paint for these clouds, which I'll mix with a little bit of yellow. Or I'll have yellow down, and then we'll be putting that in there. So I'll, I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Let's go to our tabletop, and let's get going. So again, um, we're gonna go from the, from here is gonna be our light source, our um, sun, and it's gonna be right there, right in the middle. So again, this is a formal composition. People always ask, well, I shouldn't put stuff in the center. No, there's a different kind of composition. The composition is that, What's on one side is kind of on the other. Georgia O'Keeffe did that a lot, um, where you had put one thing on one side, one thing on the other, and make it kind of very formal. And so this is, again, a formal composition. And as we come forward, it's going to be darker. So I can just wet everything, except for my sun area. I'm going to try to stay away from that. 
and I'm going to use a thirsty brush like our Dan Mudlock had taught us at Pace. And so we're just going to leave this alone and just leave that area around there alone. And I'm going to use my thirsty brush to pull it and make it soft later. So I'm wetting everything except for the center here. And let me see who's here, actually. Let me just see who's always watching. Hey, Maria. Hey, Jean. Is it Susan? It's so far away. I can't quite read it. So if you're here, thank you for coming. It's uh, very far. My laptop is quite a distance from here. And I was going to wonder if this is going to be a problem with the light straight above me. So I am going to have to put something underneath here, which will be my, which will be my paper towel. So that way you can don't see the, the light that's straight above me. So I made up. Oh, I just went over that where I want to keep it white. Okay, so let's remember that. And I do have oh, here my paper towels. Let me just get a couple pieces of that. Ask questions for anybody that's new here, and I'm, I know there's going to be probably a couple of new people that have now started um, who took my class for the first time, and I told them about this and that we are that I do paint alongs every every Thursday. No, even if I'm even if I'm away from my studio. If I can set it up, if I got Wi-Fi, but it looks like we got Wi-Fi here, so that was really great. A really good Wi-Fi, so that's that's a good thing. So now what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to take and start out with the yellow. I like to mix a little bit of yellow and white together so it's not so vibrant. I know this is a very vibrant yellow in the sky there, but I, I don't want it. It's vibrant enough, and with the white paper, I can tone it down a little bit. So I'm just going to start with yellow and go to orange, go from orange to like a... Or, to a pink and a pink to a purple, purple to a blue. And so see, we're just going to put that in there. We're just going to make this a nice sun area spot because that's the only part of the paper that will be white. And that way that'll give it that shine, that look of really bright, bright look that I want to get. And so you can see I haven't had a chance to fill my palette up again because we've been using it a lot for class. And so I'm down, my colors are down. So I'm going to have to definitely fill it up. So here we're going to take a little bit of orange. And now this is all wet except for right here. Like I said, we're just going in there. And we're going to let the water take care of my softness of the softness of the edges. That's how you get softness of the edges is by wetting it. You don't have to, um, you don't have to soften an edge in watercolor. It does it because you put water down. So I'm just going through here. I'm going to do the big brush strokes first, and I'll get the clouds and stuff like later. But first, I've got to get a nice wash through here. And as it goes to the edge, I'm going to get a little bit more, a little bit more orange. This is brilliant orange right over here. Brilliant orange is more a red orange, and permanent yellow light is more a um, yellow orange. And then if you're going to, ever going to use blue with the orange, use brilliant orange because it's more of the red orange and it won't turn green. Um, if, if you're using this one here, which is more of a yellow orange, it's going to turn green because it's more yellow than orange. And so you just, no, look, I got a scratch on the paper. This must have taken it out and got a scratch on there. See, the things like that you can't see until you wet it, but that's okay. And this is a little bit too, bright, too red and orange over here. I don't want it that red. <laughs> So let's get a little bit more of the yellow orange. And again, it's going to dry about 30% or 20% lighter. So always remember that when you're going to do your paintings. And if you have any questions, please ask away, guys. And we had um, like at least four or five people in class to, um, this week um, who are watching me every Thursday. And we got car who's probably driving home right now who the beer is from car if you're there <laughs> she's probably driving and then we have sue sue is also um driving back home everybody's driving back home and so they said they may listen on their phone so if they are they they'll probably maybe say something or maybe not uh, i guess you don't get the chat on her phone that's right car says she doesn't get her chat on the phone so we won't be hearing from from car but thank you car for the for the beer that we're drinking tonight. I've got enough beer now for the whole next month and a half, I think, that we're going to be using for um, the paint alongs. And um, 
this one's from um, Wisconsin, but the rest of them will be from Minnesota. And so we'll be drinking Minnesota beer. So here in the top, I'm making it more violety blue. So I'm taking a blue and just let that go in there, violety. And I know there's a little bit of a reflection, but here we have to put it down a little bit or a little up a little bit. And I'm doing it without the um, clouds right now because, like I said, I will be putting in the clouds with. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get it so it doesn't show reflect. Because I'm putting the clouds in with white because it's just the easiest way of doing it for for this purpose. And I would have too long a time to to make it with um, to do that with the masking fluid. It just would it would just take forever, and we don't want to do that. We have to dry it and. I'd have like one in the oven, like anything, but we don't have enough time for that either. <laughs> so we're just gonna, gonna make do and with white paint. And I really am always, oh, look at this. I'm using it. I forgot I'm using the towel of the hotel. Oops. Oh, well, I was not going to do it, uh, but I was going to have my paper towel here, but I'm so used to using a towel. <laughs> okay. So they'll, they'll charge me for a towel probably. <laughs> and so now we're going to go in with white. And while it's um well it's still not dark enough. The sky's not dark enough yet. So I'm holding this up here, guys, so that you can see it without the reflection. So let's get a little bit darker up there. A little bit darker, a little bit more purple. Oh, I gotta fill up my palette. It's getting really low. And I've been using my other palette, which is the plein air palette, that was really filled up. But um I gotta get used to one or the other. I can't be going back and forth. Is a little bit pink. And so see how um, it smooths out. It smooths out itself when you're um, doing a wet wash like this. You just give it water and give it pigment, and let the let the pigment smooth itself out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take pure white. I'm going to take a nice amount of pure white, and over here, add, actually, add a little bit of yellow to it too, white and yellow. And then I'm going to, and actually, it will turn yellow because what I'm going to do is just go in here. Make it thick and just get some of these these clouds in here. And it, it will not bleed far. Why? Because I'm using a lot of pigment. And there's nothing wrong with this. You won't even be able to tell really that I'm using white. It's it, It'll look like I'm using the white of the paper. I'm using it thick and I'm putting it into a wet wash. Like if it wasn't in a wet wash, then you'd have problems. Because if it's really thick and dry, then that's called gouache. And then that doesn't look as good as this. Where you're floating it into the water. You see, I'm just floating it in the water and gonna give it, let's give it a little bit of yellow too. Little yellow clouds, yellow and white. Comes comes down this way. Kind of going horizontal, but at an angle. Like see, I'm going horizontal with my brushwork, but I'm trying to make it so. So let's get a little bit of white and yellow. And since it's wet, like I said, it'll make it look um, soft edge because it's soft edge to white, but it will make it look like a nice cloud. And it won't be as white as the white paper, hopefully, because you really shouldn't have it as white as the paper because you only want one spot that's the sun to be, to be um, that, that light. So I'm probably going to go over this a little bit and I'm going to do the same thing up here in the blue, but first let's... Actually, I'm picking up some of the blue from below, from above, I mean. And again, you don't have to make it look exactly like the photo, you know, but get close and that's fine. It's fun to make it like kind of look kind of close like that. And so up here, it's still wet enough to get these clouds. See, using white paint, it's still wet. I'm still getting to get a nice soft edge. And, it, and I later on, I can even put it thick on there like gouache. If I really want to make the outer edge look like it's glowing. So I'm going across. These are little clouds that are like wispy, wispy clouds in the sky. Yellow and yellow and white. Let me pull it down here a little bit. Uh, so some, some uh, Maria says that she uses her chat on her phone. 
Oh, I, I'm not sure because um, Car was saying that she can't use it on her phone for some reason. I wonder why she can't use it on her phone. Like it's not there or something, or I wonder if it's something you got to turn on. I'm not sure. So there you have the um, little clouds in the sky, and I'll maybe bring some down here. Maria was at this, the last person I know that was at this bridge. This is the Charles Bridge in Prague. And um, and I've always loved painting this bridge. And one of these days I would like to get there. Maria was there and she actually sent some a bunch of um, pictures that I actually did a couple of those during the day. And man, it, from underneath, from the side. And that was, I still have it. Those are really nice. So now, now I got the sky done. That's what we'll leave that, leave that alone. And if I, I could also put it a little bit lighter later on, too. Let's make this a little bit more puffy, this cloud right here. And it's reflecting the light, but I can't hold it up the whole time. So see, you'll see it. Once it dries, it'll, I'll put it back. And you can even make watermarks. Like if you make a watermark for cloud, it kind of looks good at times. You know, at times it looks, it looks really nice. So now here should be the brightest... Um, part of the dark and so I'm going to kind of put yellow right down the middle here I'm gonna Put yellow down the middle And then um, orange on the side of it. This is just the lights. This is part of the light part And then there's the Sun and so I'll make it a little bit orange so it's like on this side a little orange this side a little orange And then as it goes to the sides, it's going to get darker, right? It gets darker and darker and darker. And you think you'd want to do building and then this. No, I'm going to do the whole area. And then I'll go in and do individual areas. I first have to get it to look like the whole overall big parts. That's what I want to do first. So now I'm going to get some. A little bit more reddish, reddish orange. And then just let's just wet this all and I can make it darker later because this is gonna be really dark but this will be like the undercoating of it just to kind of make it start give it a start of color and that'll dry really nice see how it looks really really colorful or light right there now and it looks like it's the lightest part right and so that's the way I totally definitely wanted now I could have used a little bit like uh, the picture is a photo so it look at how or yellow that is you know it looks kind of to me almost overblown like the yellow i i'd rather make it more natural it seems like that and i know it gets like that it gets like that and what well, last week in new york when they had the smoke and stuff and actually we've had smoke here too in bemidji and bagley not as bad as they had in new york but you notice when it was really orangey and the, and actually the sun yesterday was this color <laughs> Um, just a round ball of orange and so that's been like that here but you don't have to make it exactly the same color as the as the photo just push this over this way so I'm in center here <laughs> all right so there we have our our lights so that's all our lights right that's all our lights now we go and start our middle tone and darks and this time, the step two and step three, the detailed darks, are kind of almost be almost the same because this whole area is a big dark, but it's also, I've got to get the um, detail of the sculpture in there, so I still need to get that in there. That's pretty, yeah, I always, I always heard Maria just said that she tried to get a picture like this for me. <laughs> But see, like, there's always people on there. And that's what I heard from a lot of people who've been to Prague and on this bridge that there's just always so many people on this bridge and you don't really get it where there's just one or two people on there. But there's so many other photographers out there and this is one of those things I got from Unsplash. Um, so, um, you know, it's, it was okay to use. And so we're going to go with that. So now I'm going to feel this. This is not quite dry. But I'm going to go start going with it anyway. So let's make this part. This is going to be right here. We're going to make that really orange. And we're going to bring it down by to the head. And because that's 
what it is is it's showing um, what we call optical scatter and so you make that orange because the sun is burning out the building right here and so you just actually make it orange bright orange and then right away you bring it down and you make it darker right away it's not like you let it go a little bit no right away you make it dark a little bit darker because it's the sun right there is just burning that area it's burning the area of orange and then you can go dark and this um this has a little bit of orange on it too because it's right in and actually you make some of that yellow even like it's almost burnt out yellow and orange together and so i'm just going to make this little tower here And when I go through these guys' heads, what I'll do is later on, I'll put rim lighting on them and I'll do that again with a um, light, like a white, and I'll just put it on there, uh, just opaquely. I'm not gonna try to make it transparent. I'm not gonna put masking fluid on there. I'm just gonna use, you know, the, just gonna use white paint. So as I go away from this area now, I'm gonna, gonna try to get dark right away. And I sketch this up like 15 minutes before we got on here. Um, because I didn't have time um, this week beforehand. Been busy teaching, and, and then last week I was at the Plain Air Fest of Cedarburg, and so I hadn't had a chance to sit down and do a really tight drawing of this. So I, I basically did a really quick sketch of this. And sometimes that's even better, though. It's really fun sometimes just to go in fast. As you can see, I was really fast, a really fast sketch of the image. And so then there's a little break right here where it gets dark. And you notice I'm going right to the people. Don't kind of go around the people. I mean, I guess I could have, but I just want to keep things clean and get that hard edge down the bottom here. I could also take it out. Like I can rub things out. Like their heads, I can just pull. I can have a thirsty brush like Dan talks about. I can have a thirsty brush. And what I'll do is I'll pull out the pigment, rinse your brush, on a hotel pa on a hotel towel <laughs> oopsie i'll see how much i can wash out of there <laughs> and then we're just going to bring this over and then just let's see it goes down almost to their to this guy's leg and this is pretty dark I want, and to get a really dark dark you got to start no, using a lot more paint um that's always a problem i have with new students that are starting out and trying to make their paintings dark um, and the, and we're using white paper and today we also use black paper and for that you even knew, need, need more pigment because you're covering black with a color and it's watercolor so you're covering you want to make it opaque and so it's transparent watercolor so you got to use it pretty thick to give yourself a look of something that will stay and not shift back to shift back to a white or a dark from the black of the paper so as I go across here, I'm now going to start getting really dark. But first, I'm kind of getting the middle tone back here because the, the sculpture that's in front and the monuments, they're going to be black uh, or really, really dark. I will probably use a little bit dark in there, but this is what's behind those statues. And so I can still have a little bit of the um, orange that's back here because that's still the sun is right there in the back. And as it comes forward, things get darker. Put, I'll do those over this, and I'll be still able to see it because this is still more pretty um, transparent than I'm doing right here. This one is pretty dark, but I will this little tower here. I kind of do it in stages where I, you know, I still go from back to front. I'm not going to do this sculpture yet, but I'm just going to give this a little bit of so that if I need a little light part of this, it's not going to be so light, but it'll give the color that I'm, I'm looking for. This will be a little bit of um, a top here. There's a little roof right there. Okay, so let's go this way now. Go right over these guys' heads. Here's the wall. And now, same thing with this um, monument. I'm going to make the side orange, and then as it goes to the other side, I'm going to make that not orange. I'm going to make it dark. If you have questions, everybody new, if you have questions, just let me know. Just write them down in the chat. I'll look up every once in a while. 
and I have to stare far away because <laughs> my monitor is kind of far away, but I, I can still see it enough. So let's just put that orange like that, make it nice and orange. And, and as it goes down and as it goes away from there, I'm going to go really dark. And I'm using um, the, the brown I'm using is Amidazolone amid is alone brown it's a kind of a purpley brown that i really like and um i can use it by itself like alone with just that color here's a little lamp i'm going to be putting in there and let's get the background again before i put the monuments in the monuments can go in front of this and i still want to keep this a little bit a little bit red and this could be a little bit more orange So in Illinois, it's nice today. No more, no more um, smoke. That's good. Because when I left, there was also smoke in, in Illinois. Boy, that's getting around everywhere. And I had gotten a cut when I was in Colorado. I had gotten a cough. I think it was from the smoke because um, I talked to a couple of other people that came back from Colorado, and they also had the a little cough or a cold and a sore throat. I had. <clears throat> And I still have it a little bit. Once in a while, I'll get a coughing attack, and I'm just like, wow. And I was just talking to a couple of people just today that were there in, in Colorado for Pace. And they said they had the same thing. They had a huge cough and a cold. and So I think that smoke is affecting us. <laughs> and then he also was from Manhattan, and he had, they had that same smoke. <laughs> so he would hit a double... All right, let's make this a little bit darker. And if you want to make this um, like a limited palette, that's okay. This is a, this is a great one to do a limited palette. You don't need to put like blues in this. Or I do have the blue here, so I can reflect some of that in the really dark darks. I I use that in the really dark darks of the of the um, piece, like in the people. I put some color and stuff. And so just because you're using um, a lot of orange, like look at the sky. It's pretty. It came down pretty much. It got a little bit lighter than I expected, but it's still okay. So this is the lightest light. As long as that is the lightest light, it will still give the effect of that being really mm -hmm. bright. Oops. Over here, just gonna. And then, see how I'm not doing the um, the sculptures yet or the monuments. Because they're they're going to be darker on top of this color, and then we're gonna now let's do the street and get the street to where I wanted to keep it, and so I'm gonna wet it all. I'm gonna wet up here and just kind of bring it over, go right over the people. I want to kind of get that look of that shiny down down the center. So I'm just going to bring it over here. And I do want to get most of the dark darks that I'm going to end up with. And so I'm going to start wetting my black. And I'm going to put some black in here. And I should be, I'm going to start looking into uh, all kinds of different blacks. Because they kind of make a difference. And I've been watching other artists, watercolorists, like Elvaro. He uses lunar black. And um, they all have their own little blacks that they love to use. And so I want to I want to test them all and see which one I like best. I like putting a black down, but I like putting color into it. So it doesn't just look like black and like a void. I like to take a little bit of blue, put a little blue over here, and it'll make it a little bit more blue. And as it comes to the center, I'll add more orange to it. And I'm wetting the paper as I go. I didn't wet it all at once because I kind of want to just see if I want to maybe make some texture on the street. I go across here and just make a texture and use the paper. And so you can take it and rub it across quickly and you can get texture into the paper like a dry brush look right up here and I can do that again uh, one more time I can keep on going with the dry brush look too but then I also want to make the the shadows that are um I kind of want to do them now because I know where the people are and since I'm doing doing the going across and wetting it then I can just right away put in some soft edged soft edged 
shadows. So here, let's go down here. I know that I can go right into this area, make it dark. Orange on this side. If there's anybody new and they want to ask questions and then and or they miss something and go ahead and ask it and if I'm not looking up and I don't answer it today, I will look at it sooner or later and then I will answer it into the comment section, not into the chat anymore because the chat will be shut down. But then you can I can do it into the chat part of the or the um in the actual part of the video that you can then write afterwards in the description of the video right down there. Nice little orange in here. Well, let's say, like I said, let's put the um, shadows in there and I'll make them kind of purpley, black and red. So here, these, these two will have a shadow going back like this way. And it looks really dark on my monitor, but it's not as dark as it it, it looks. It's got a little bit of um, warmth to it, a little bit of orange to it. And then there's, let's see, there's a person right here that I put in, right there. Then there is also like this guy right here and then i'm gonna have to use black because it's so dark already so i'll have to use a really dark dark make that look back but that making it dark makes the lights look lighter right it makes it makes it look really bright so we're gonna have to wait for that to dry too to get all those people i hope it dries fast enough it's like oh boy i don't i have to take it over to the thing and they have a hairdryer on the wall i have to I have to leave here for a second and go to the bathroom in the hotel they have the on the wall they have the hairdryer <laughs> all right let's start with our um now we got the, pretty much our big areas and we got the, the street you know we got that pretty well done and so the people and the sculptures is what's next and so these are our dark darks. These are the big darks, and it's also the details. So it's combined together as one. You, you can do that. You don't have to m make it one, two, three. Sometimes it's one, two, and three together. So two and three are together today. Because this is detail, but it's also my dark, big dark areas. So that's step two. And so see how I put down any color that's dark. And then once it's wet, I apply other colors. And I'm even going to try to use some red. On the left side of this so that it kind of picks up like a hints of red from the sun right on the edge here we'll just put that down in my workshops a lot of times though this time i'm not doing one um of the Prague bridge because normally i've always done the Prague bridge we always do something that has to do with the Prague bridge because uh, it's just it's such a neat bridge and it's got so many different beautiful views that you can do with it. It's just amazing. And so now, see, I'm going to put a little blue in there, too. You can put even a little light blue. Just let it let it rest on there because the sky's a little bit um, blue, so you can have a little bit of that blue in there. Taking it down, and here's a little space between the rooftop over here. There's a little space. If you want to do it just like with three colors and you're just using, or just one color or two colors, like we just yellow oranges that that would that would work too. I like to do things full color, and then um, you can make it whatever color you want. You can just add things to a, into the into the scene as you're going along. Here, this is I'm making a little bit more red because it's a little bit behind this piece of sculpture. And then maybe on the side here, maybe a little bit darker. And it's very silhouette. I mean, a lot of these shapes are silhouettes, so. You know, that's not a bad thing uh, sometimes you know and it's, it's kind of an easy thing too sometimes to make it a silhouette i always tell my students this is a great way of learning how to use enough paint too because you have to use a lot of paint if you don't um, it's not going to turn out it's going to be really light and it'll be a high key which by the way in my workshop for the first time yesterday i did a yesterday i did a high key painting with the students and I learned how to teach how to do a high key painting and what is a high key painting it's a painting that 
where everything is really light. And I learned that I was always teaching it wrong because I was teaching, because a lot of times when we were making shadows, you know, a lot of times shadows seem to be dark, right? You're always kind of thinking that shadows are dark. Um, but in a high key painting, the shadows are just slightly darker and it's considered a light. It's part of the light part of the, of the composition. And so I was always making it a dark part of the composition, the, the, the shadows. And so that's really um, a great discovery that I made in this picture that we had done. There was a couple other problems with the picture, but we had a, a great time painting it. And um, I think we all learned how to do high key paintings. High key paintings are kind of tough because like most of the painting is very light. You don't go past like a number five in value. And then you, you save like the number 10 value for smaller spots in the picture, like your center of interest. And it's hard to do. It's harder than you think. <laughs> and so now I'm at this has to dry right here. That's not dry yet. So let's go over this one. And then by that time, this will be dry and I can do the small sculptures. So for this sculpture over here, I'm going to use a round brush. The statues are darker than, um, they're going to be about the same as the wall right here next to it. But as they go on the top of the wall, see, I made the top of the wall lighter. It should be about the same, you know, and as it comes forward, everything gets darker. But it's, the, the, these statues are darker than the, what's in the background because that's closer to the sun. And so everything that's coming back and I'm just following what I see in the photo. So just follow what you see in the photo and you'll do fine. This, this is a very interesting um, sculpture or monument because it looks like it was a horns. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, wait, is that a devil? I can't, it can't be a devil. These are saints, right? And so he's holding something up. I think he's holding up a cross on this one. So I go in there and I did a really fast sketch. So it's not super perfect to what it is, but that it's, you know, it's enough to see. And so I got to get rid of these horns. <laughs> I don't want to make it look like the devil because I don't think I think these are all saints on the bridge hmm all right a little bit of blue from the sky sitting in there a little bit of orange in there from the sun down 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 a little bit of purple dark purple black a little bit about all uh, but it's floating and you know uh, we learned a lot about how to float and i made it and now in my classes if you take the first day if you take my class you become um you you leave beginner um hood <laughs> you know you're no longer a beginner when you take my class you are no longer a, a beginner because i make you in the first day learn how to do the learn how to do a watercolor wash professionally and you're never going to never do it that way and so i gave very um the idea that okay from this point on if you do the washes like that you are no longer a beginner because you're doing it how a professional would do it and that is floating your pigment you're putting down one wash and they all did it and so i i, I claim that they were all non -be, um non-beginners anymore so that is something that you can look forward to if you take one of my workshops. You know, will no longer be a beginner if you are um, even just a one class. All it takes is one class. So here we have his face. Then come down. The top of the wall is lighter, so I, I just kind of put it together a little bit lighter on the top wall. Don't make this so thick that it's not floating because then it looks like gouache. And I know in my screen it looks really, really dark, but it's still transparent here. Um, I, uh, my screen, it looks really dark like it's not, but it is transparent. I don't know if you can tell. You know, you, you should never have the light and the video right above it, but this is the only place they had in the hotel room. <laughs> That it was bright enough to do this at so we're going through here and now i'll do a couple of these back here so i have to i'm kind of working how it's drying and so you know it's not how you um 
establish what to do next in that. Um, a lot of times when I'm doing these, uh, I just do whatever is dry. But it doesn't really matter because this could have been done before, but it couldn't because it was wet, the sky. But now it's now it's being done. And I can still know that this has to be lighter and not as dark as this sculpture in front. Let's take our rigger brush and get in there and get the small details, which is the last thing you do. But again, I've got to wait for this stuff to dry before I can do the people. And so while this is dry, I know this is dry. I'm just going to go in here and get that right away. And I know what the values are going to be, so I'm not really, I'm not pushing anything different. And I'm going to do the same thing as long as you know your value pattern. You have to follow the value pattern. It's one of the things I tell my class constantly now. You cannot um, waver away from your value pattern. Your, your sketch, your study, the thing that you do before you get going with your painting, with watercolors especially. I don't see a lot of oil painters doing that. I'm not sure how they how they um, design their paintings, but watercolors, we have to design our paintings so we know what's going to be dark and light and we have to be able to do big, large areas. So you've got to be able to do that. So coming down here and see how now this is darker and it's it's in front, it's on the wall, near the wall here. And well, I really can't see that image, what's on the wall. So I'm just kind of making this up, hoping my drawing is good enough. Oh, that's the person. That's the person. Okay. That's what that is. I was wondering what that is. And there's some people back here too. And here's a lamp. And here's another sculptor. Another. Somebody wrote something. Dave. Hey, Dave. On the statue on the right, you missed a negative space. Part of the pedestal is missing. When there and. Oh, oh yeah, right here. If it goes down to the wall. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. I gotta put that down. And it goes down to the wall there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> he was floating otherwise. <laughs> and I also gonna have to put white paint here for the windows that you can that are white, like you almost see through them. So that's kind of fun. Hmm. Here we have another sculpture here too. Another lamp back here. Here's a lamp. Well, you must, uh, you know, for people that have gone there, like Maria, who's gone there, it must be amazing. This bridge is just, I mean, the sculpt. I mean, how many of those monuments they have on there? It just, it looks to me, it's a must be amazing. I gotta get there one day. I definitely want to do a workshop there one day. And please tell your friends about. Um, I've been asking around, and I have people who are asking that, you know, why am I, why am I not teaching for certain um, areas and places? And I've gotten the. Um, some of the answers back and it was kind of funny because they're saying I'm not popular enough. I don't have the um, amount of people on Instagram. I don't have enough people on Instagram. So let it get around. Um, please um, get some subscription, just some subscriptions filled at, at um, this YouTube and also on if you're on Instagram, you know, tell your friends to like because um, that's how I get. You know, they look at the Instagram accounts. And I'm like, well, really. Um, <laughs> Um, I've been teaching for a long time now, and I'm a pretty good teacher, I think. Um, so it has to do with how many Instagram followers I have. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so, but that's the way I do it. So get on Instagram and and like me. And here on YouTube, get some subscribers. I got to get, I do get quite a few subscribers each week, and but I've got to get it up there so that it's more like some of those really professional professionals and popular artists because we were, we were joking about that in class all week that I'm not a very popular, I'm not a popular artist. So and so Maria was talking about uh, when it comes to oil painting, It'll depend on the instructor, but the instructor's always taught us to do a drawing and wash, which establish values on one 
neutral color. Oh, so right on the paper, probably right on the paper too. And that like watercolors, we kind of do it in a sketchbook or, or like I do it in my head kind of, or on a camera, I look at it and I kind of establish my value pattern, but they must do it then on the actual canvas because you can just keep on piling. So you're kind of doing it while you're painting. So that's kind of, a, I, I can understand that. Yeah. All right now, so now the people. So here we're gonna go in and of course I, I'll make her a redhead. There we go. And then the guy over here. And then we're just gonna make them pretty dark and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them light around them to then make it look like they um, are rimlet because they are right in center and they're going to be rimlet. There's, there's going to be light on them. And so I just use a dark first and make it wet so that I can float other colors in there. They may have a different color clothes on, but you don't really see the color of the clothes until you um, put it in after you put it in a dark because you, the dark is more important than the color of this. It's got a long coat on here. This guy's got a long jacket too. And then I'm gonna maybe take, put a little red in here. And there's a person right here, back there. I'm just gonna make that a little not as dark. Here, that's two people back here. Then there's one right here. We still got time, yes, we still got time. And for anybody that's new, I usually do these in an hour. I try to do it always in an hour. And they'll be here for a while, you know, forever actually. So, and we just were talking because um, we had four people from my, who first started with me on this um, YouTube channel. And Car was one of them and Sue, they were in my class this week. And we were talking and my very first one, and they, I don't think they did the very first one but it was April 12th, 2020. And I did a church in Vienna and it was on a trip that I was hoping I could get to Prague, but it was in Vienna. It was the interior of a church. And so if you look it up on my, and the thing you'll see the first one I did was of a church, interior church in, in Vienna. And it was the first time, um, April, because we were inside and I decided I lost all my classes because of COVID. And so then at 2020, I decided to do these free of charge and just um, do them and have fun and teach and teach everybody as much as I can. And so to this day, we're still doing them. And I don't know how many we have yet, but I think there's maybe about close to 300 or something like that. So it's fun. So see how now we're getting them to look like people walking down the street and you know you don't have to make them really colorful because again it's so bombarded with the color of the sun and the red and orange that things turn red and have the orange in them because the sun is so vibrant and it's going right into the side of the, like this guy here and putting it in and again also some of the blue in the sky put some of that in there don't feel like you need to just have it up there like maybe this guy can have it on the top here and the shoulders are usually on the top. Um, you're you're going to get a little bit of, or I should put the back side, uh, the back part more blue and then the front have it more orangey light. Yeah, I'll make this side a little bit lighter. And the canvas, yeah, yep. I am loving what I'm doing on plain air because I'm working on board on, on a panel that's like an oil painting and I'm actually using a watercolor like gouache and then um, I'm actually using gouache too and so I it's kind of has a feel of oil painting without the mess and without well it's not really messy oils but without having to use um, the turpentine and all that kind of stuff so I do use um, the aqua oils
Okay. I think we're getting pretty close here. What's this? What is that? There's something here I penciled in. Let me just look really quickly on the screen. Okay, there's some people back there. And I got to put some, we're going to use white to make it some of the um, bricks and stuff like that. And like I said, we're getting, it's no, it's not against the law. You can use darks. And so I'm going to make it a little bit darker in that area. So right here, I'm going to make it a little bit darker, more like with an orange. And I'm just going to, there's some people back here too. Maybe I'll put the person in there and there and there and then the roof itself and stuff like that behind it is a little bit darker. Go around these guys. You put a little, little shadows. We don't want long shadows there because that's far away. That's a little bit farther away. And now let's get in, in there with our um, lights and our whites and our, oh, we forgot this guy. One more guy. Hold on. Hold on. This guy's got a bicycle. I put it in there. Get a little bit lighter. Because he's against the light. You can't barely see him, but he's there. He'll be there. That's the main thing about this kind of painting. It's just, you can do a lot of negative, you can do a lot of um, silhouette shapes. And then you don't have to think, worry about what color you're using and just make it very silhouette, make it dark. I just need to make it dark. Well, I was going to put in a bike in for him. He has a little bike. You can barely even see him. Maybe your screen is better than mine. I'm just using my laptop. And so now for the street, let's put a little bit of like, I'll put little lines in here for the, for the cobblestone. Very light lines. Now I'll just do a little bit more. You know, juxtaposition lines for, you know, the brickwork, pavers. Follow the perspective. Follow the perspective. We had some really good talks in class about drawing and about using black, about using white. And, you know, it's... um. You can change sometimes. You don't always have to, you know, even though I went to school and I was taught never to use black or white, I never did this. There's reasons I'm doing it now. And in my classes, I teach you why it's possible to use black. And I've done that, taught it here too, that the reason you want to use it, make it so that you can control your watercolor a little bit better. So, and also different techniques. We use some different techniques because you want to capture your own style at times, right? You want to make it your own style. Let's show you a little bit closer up. Like, can you see how it's a little bit more? Just you can see there's, there's. It's not all black. It's it has some nice, nice um, transparentness to it. Oh, now it's out of focus. Come on, get back in focus. Oh, there we go. Back in focus. All right, so next thing, final thing, we have enough time. Yep, five minutes. And this gives me enough time to go in there with white, with uh, white and orange maybe, and even just pure white to kind of get this glistening. So I'll take a little bit of white and yellow and like on, and around her. Yeah, because they, they're, they're right here. And so they're, they're rimlet a little bit. The top of the wall can have a little bit of brightness to it. Maybe even some of these sculptures can have a little bit of lightness to them. It just makes it look a little bit real because it's like, you know, you have a lot of shininess that when it, the sun is like this. Anything that's like metallic and 
on the edge of people and stuff. It just, it, it's bright. It's a super bright scene. So like these lamps also can, they have glass in them and they're metal maybe. And so you can just show a little bit of glistening on the lamp itself. The sculpture can even have a little bit on there because maybe there's parts that are rubbed and In the window here, there was two light spots on the actual tower here. I like the wall, the top of the wall to put a little light on there. I don't make it too thick and I don't want to make it too perfect. I just want to, here we have the sculpture, make the side of the sculpture a little bit down. They don't, don't get carried away with this. This is like, you don't want to get, it's um, a little bit as it goes a long way. <laughs> you don't want to start to notice. And then it looks like it's just all these dots all over. So we don't want to do that either. All right. Any other questions, guys? Do one more thing. And I think, uh, anyways, there's uh, on, on these tops, there's nice these little, little spires here and little round dots antennas all right i think that's it have fun with this one and again i always post on my my facebook page which actually is getting kind of big too but nobody sees that because they don't you know they just look at for our, they look for your instagram page and it's funny how that works. So let's go here, make it a little bit darker. Bricks in here. <clears throat> All right, I set the tape off and now we call it quits. I wish I made the sky a little bit darker, but um, and there's nothing you, you can do now. I mean, I wouldn't go back in there. That would really ruin everything. But um, practice, practice, practice. And then always try to make your um, darks and your lights dark right away. Because you always got to remember it's going to be 20% lighter. And you're still seeing some parts that are wet. See the parts that are shiny that are wet. So there you go. And again, that is not just solid black. If you go closer, you'll see that it's transparent. Um, but it has the look of, you know, the sun being really bright. Doesn't that look really bright right there? So, super fun. Super fun. And um, if you ever get a chance, please um, try. Try and then dump it into the our Facebook group page, which is Becker Art Group. And um, we'll talk about it. We love to talk about it. And, um, and I... All the people that came to the class this week that are on here all the time, thank you for um, coming to the live class too, because it's a little bit different from this that I can watch you paint and I can always help you out a little bit easier than doing it, you know, and from here on YouTube. But thanks guys and cheers. Cheers to next week. And I, again, I'm not quite sure if next week I can do one if they have enough Wi-Fi there. At Dillman's, um, they usually don't, but I, I think they got some um, a little bit better um, Wi-Fi recently, and so hopefully we can get get one next week too. We can do one next week. So until then, until next week.